All right, let's talk about this book, It Fell From the Sky. We are going to use the first little section of this book, not the whole entire thing, although the whole entire thing is really beautiful and wonderful. Before we get started, we can spend a good amount of time talking about what this object might be. And if you are saying, Mrs. Bowler, it is a marble, I might say to you, but what else is it? What else could it be? So we can start by just reading the story. It fell from the sky. And we won't go through the whole thing right here. It fell from the sky on a Thursday. Ladybug was perched on a leaf when it landed. I had a very good view. It bounced three times and then rolled to a stop. The inchworm insisted it only bounced twice. Everyone agreed it was the most amazing thing they had ever seen. Okay, so we can go through and read the story, but then we can back up and read it again, at least this first little section, and do some bard instrument exploration. So let's go to that because I think I know what this is. I think that it is the head of our mallet. That's my guess. Okay, it fell from the sky on a Thursday. Could you make your mallets start up high and then very gently fall on a Thursday? Ladybug was perched on a leaf when it landed. I had a very good view. It bounced three times and then rolled to a stop. Could you make your mallets bounce three times and then roll to a stop? Or maybe you decide to roll to a stop. Or maybe you are going to roll to a stop. The inchworm insisted it only bounced twice. Let's bounce two times. Maybe, maybe, or maybe, or maybe. Everyone agreed it was the most amazing thing they had ever seen. Remarkable, said the walking stick. He was happy to find something even stranger than himself in the garden. I have noticed that our mallets kind of look like a walking stick, don't they? Could you make your walking stick walk up the instrument? And maybe we could walk down the instrument. And maybe we could walk up and down the bar. Wait. A frog assumed it was a gumdrop. He did not like how it tasted. Oh, look. The dung beetle tried to roll it, but it was too heavy. Could you make your mallets roll? Oops. <laughs> Could you make your mallets, so that's a good option, roll on your instrument? Could you make them roll up and down? Or what about? The stink bug doubted it came from the sky at all. He thought it might have grown from the ground like a flower. Could you make your mallets start at the very bottom of your instrument and grow like a flower? Or maybe you decide, or maybe you decide, or finally, the wise grasshopper was consulted. It is not of earthly origins, he said. Most likely a fallen star, a comet, or maybe even a small planet. What would your mallet sound like if they were a comet shooting across the sky? Or what if they were a very small planet? Hmm, I'm not sure about that one. Or maybe, or maybe. The Luna Moth knew it was not a fallen star or a comet or a planet. It was a magical chrysalis that needed to be kept warm. She waited all through the night, but the chrysalis never hatched. What would it sound like if your mallets were waiting and waiting and waiting? What would it sound like if you were playing while you were waiting? Great. 
and that's where we can pause for today. Okay, let's talk about this really quick. Definitely a lot of barred instrument exploration possibilities. So if you are introducing or reviewing technique or, um, you know, reviewing high and low sounds on the instrument, anything like that, this is a really great option for kindergarten all the way through fifth grade, really. Another thing to point out is if you wanted to use this just with kindergarten and use it as barred instrument exploration and then stop the project there, that would be totally fine. You know, in future uh, lessons, we're going to talk about a lot of other rhythmic possibilities, uh, body percussion and improvisation on barred instruments and uh, rondo form and working in small groups and everything like that. You can definitely use this as the jumping off point for that in, you know, maybe second, third, fourth grade or so, uh, or if you want to just use it as barred instrument exploration and then leave it there, that is fine as well. It will just depend on your um, specific curriculum and what your students need at this moment in time. Okay, the last time we looked at It Fell From the Sky, we were doing some barred instrument exploration. Let's add a rhyme to this and then we can expand it in a lot of different ways. What do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Try with me. What do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Clap the words, what do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Snap them. What do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. This time try another combination that you choose and here we go. What could it be? Excuse me, what do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Do something different. What do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Something different. What do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Great. I noticed that I have three parts to this rhyme. I noticed that there is this first part, what do you see? And then I have this second part, what could it be? And then this third part that's a little bit longer, falling from the sky on a Thursday. Will you please show me which one do you want to speak and play? Option one, option two, or option three. Show me your fingers in three, two, one. Freeze whatever you chose. That's what you were playing. One, two, play your part, go. What do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Do it again. What do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Great. Okay, so at this point, we have had lots of experiences with this rhyme. We've been speaking it and keeping a steady beat. We've been playing it on um, clapping and snapping in different combinations of body percussion. And then we have been working with some part work uh, divisions of part one, part two, part three. Great. So after all of these experiences, we are probably ready to derive some of these rhythms from text. Here's how we're going to do that. Let's speak this and point to this steady beat. Here we go. What do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. I am interested in these last two beats. Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Well, right off the bat, we can notice that this last beat doesn't have anything on it. So that's a rest. What about um, this second to last beat, this penultimate beat? <laughs> Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Rest. How many sounds do we hear on this beat? Two. And in this class, we call that toddy. Great. Let's do this first beat in that second phrase. Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Rest. Falling from the, how many sounds do we hear? Falling from the, one, two, three, four. Great, and in this class, when we have four sounds on one beat, we call it takadimi, and we write it with 416, that's very right. Great, so now we have takadimi, mm -mm, Thursday, rest. Fabulous, let's look at this top line. There are two steady beats that have one sound on them each. So let's figure that out. What do you see? Oh, what could it be? Great, so C, and B are each one sound on a beat. And in this class, we call that a ta and we write it with a quarter note, fabulous. So now at this point we have, what do you ta? What could it ta? Taka dimi sky on a Thursday rest. Okay, great, we are rocking and we are rolling. We have three beats that we have not yet figured out. So let's look at those. What do you see? Okay, so what do you? I have three sounds on that beat. What about what could it? Also three, and then falling from the sky on a. 
three sounds again. So we have three beats and each of those beats have three sounds, but they're not all even, are they? We have long sounds and short sounds. So let's speak this with a uh, short, short, long, long, short, short, etc. Here we go. Long, short, short, ta, short, short, long, ta, ta, ka, di, mi, long, short, short, ta, di, rest. Do it again. Long, short, short, ta, short, short, long, ta, Taka di mi long, short, short, ta di, rest. Great. In this class, if we have one beat with three sounds where the first one is long and the next two are short, what do we call that in this class? Correct, we call it ta di mi and we write it with an eighth note followed by two sixteenth notes. So let's read that so far. Here we go. Ta di mi ta, short, short, long, ta. Taka di mi ta di mi ta di, rest. Great, so the only thing we're missing is this short, short, long. In this class, what do we call that? Taka di, and we write it with two sixteenth notes followed by an eighth note. Correct. Okay, great. So now let's read the whole thing on rhythm syllables. Here we go. Ta di mi ta, taka di ta, taka di mi ta di mi ta di, rest. Fabulous. So now let's take some phrases that we have pulled from the book and let's turn those into rhythmic building blocks. And we can do a lot of uh, rhythmic exploration with this. So let's look at what we have here. Falling from the sky, small planet, stranger than a walking stick, chrysalis, gumdrop, and grew from the ground. At this point, there are a lot of different things that we could do with these rhythmic building blocks. We could have students speak it on text. We could have students speak it on rhythm syllables. We could have students go ahead and start combining different orders of these blocks as if they're doing a sight reading activity. But for today, let's do some echoing with body percussion on text. We'll start with two blocks and then as we see that students are ready, we can expand to four blocks or eight steady beats. So will you please echo my combination? And the only rule is you may not do the same body percussion combination that I have done. So we're echoing rhythms, but we're not echoing body percussion. You improvise the body percussion. My turn first and here I go. Groove from the ground, thumb drop. Your turn, groove from the ground, thumb. My turn. Stranger than a walking stick, stranger than a walking stick, stranger than a walking stick, stranger than a, my turn. Falling from the sky, stranger than a walking stick, falling from the sky, stranger than a walking stick. Great, so now let's move to four cards for eight steady beats total. Same thing here. You may not echo my body percussion, only echo my rhythm. Here I go, it's my turn first. Chrysalis. Falling from the sky, chrysalis, small planet, chrysalis, falling from the sky, chrysalis, small, my turn. Stranger than a walking stick, grew from the ground, grew from the ground, stranger than a walking stick, stranger than a walking stick, grew from the ground, grew from the ground, stranger than a walking stick. Great. So that's where we'll pause for today. Okay, let's talk about some things here. You'll notice that when we were deriving the rhythms from text, that students were already consciously aware of some of these 16th note patterns, well, all of the 16th note patterns that we were using. So, uh, takadimi, ta dimi and takadi. Those were all consciously known, which means that students could hear them and think about how many sounds they were hearing on one beat and what order of long and short they were hearing. And then they derive the notation from what they are hearing and experiencing and noticing and all of that good stuff. There is um, absolutely a possibility that your students are not yet ready for that. Or maybe you have some grades that are and some grades that aren't. Makes total sense, right? So let's talk about some ways that we could kind of scale this back in the event that this is not the rhythmic set that your students are working on. One option is that you could use this with text only and no notation at all. So in this case, this would be one of your introductory experiences to 16th note combinations. That's totally fine. You can use text only, no notation, and then you can also add graphic notation like the long and short sounds that we were talking about. You can do that if you want, but there's no reason to use notation if it's not going to serve your students, right? Another option is that you could use this activity as a way to establish what you are going to call these 16th note combination patterns, and then a way to establish how you're going to write them. 
If you do this, it would also be really, really helpful for students to have uh, another set of songs and games and activities in addition to this one specific activity that they can draw from before it's time to assign anything a label. So we have this as an introductory experience. That's one option. So no labels, no notation. We also have this as a way to introduce the label and the notation. And then the other option would be uh, when we talk about these rhythmic building blocks, you know, we had a lot of 16th notes and 16th 16th note combinations with the rhythmic building blocks that we were using. But you could also scale it back and use the more traditional rhythmic building block set. So get rid of all of the 16th notes, all of the 16th note combinations, and we would just replace those with eighth note combinations instead. Here's what I mean. We could still keep gum, drop, chrysalis, small planet. But for the last two, we can add rolling, rolling, and bounce rest. So replacing those rhythmic building blocks and using the more standard ones if your students are ready for uh, like eighth note and quarter note combinations, but not yet ready for 16th note combinations. All right, that is where we will pause this activity for today. Okay, let's keep going with It Fell From The Sky. This is our third video talking about um, some of the different ways that we might explore 16th note combinations using this book. We can start by reviewing what we have done in the previous videos, which is this rhyme and the rhythmic building blocks. Let's speak the rhyme together. Here we go. What do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Speak it again. What do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Great. To review these rhythmic building blocks, let's have one student come to the board and just move the blocks around in a different combination. And we'll speak that twice and then speak the rhyme again. And while we are speaking the rhyme, that's when another student comes up to the board and changes the rhythmic building blocks. So we're speaking everything two times in a row during the A section, the main rhyme. That's when the rhythmic building blocks get changed. Okay, let's try it. Here we go. What do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Speak it again. What do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Speak it, go, gum drops, grew from the ground. Stranger than a walking stick, falling from the sky. Do it again. Gum drop, grew from the ground. Stranger than a walking stick, falling from the sky. Speak the rhyme. What do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Speak it again. What do you see? What could it be? Falling from the sky on a Thursday. Speak it, go. Falling from the sky. Falling from the sky. Chrysalis. Stranger than a walking stick. Do it again. Falling from the sky. Falling from the sky. Chrysalis. Stranger than a walking stick. Okay, great, let's stop right there. You could definitely do this on text or like we were just doing, or you could absolutely do it on rhythm syllables. It just depends on what you want to do. Okay, so we've done this review with uh, one student making the decision for the whole entire class. At this point, let's get into groups of two. We're just pairing students up like that. And uh, students can come up with their own combinations with their partner of how they want to order these rhythmic building blocks. And then we'll do the same thing again. We'll speak the rhyme two times in a row. And then this time, instead of us all speaking the same thing on the board, students have their own combination in front of them. And they, with their partner, are doing whatever combination they have come up with. Again, two times in a row. That sets us up really well to move to some barred instrument improvisation. You'll recall that this is how we started uh, the activity in the very first video. Once we get set up behind a barred instrument, this can absolutely, by the way, be two students behind a barred instrument. There's no reason to have every student behind their own instrument, especially, obviously, if you don't have access to that many. When you're there, will you please take off your lowest C? Great. And now students can play whatever combination they have come up with, with their rhythmic building blocks. They can play that on the lowest bar on the instrument, which is now D. So let's imagine my pattern is chrysalis gumdrop grew from the ground, grew from the ground. Might sound like chrysalis gumdrop grew from the ground, grew from the ground. Do it again. Chrysalis gumdrop grew from the ground, grew from the ground. What do you see? What could it be? 
falling from the sky on a Thursday. Speak it again. So while we're speaking the rhyme, I am passing off the mallets to my partner. So we have um, two partners behind the instrument. Both of them get a chance to play. So after we have done playing the same combination on one single bar, now it's time to move around the instrument. If I were to take my same um, pattern that I just had, chrysalis from drop, grew from the ground, grew from the ground. Notice that I started on D and I ended on D. Great. If I want my improvisation to sound like it's finished, like it's final, like it's done, I will end on D. If I want it to sound like it's going to keep going, like I'm not done, I will end on something other than D. So that's an option that you have. Something else for students to think about is if, um, let's say that I had a, you know, stranger than a walking stick, stranger than a walking stick. Well, that is a really strange sound. And maybe I decide that I like it. Stranger than a walking stick, stranger than a walking stick. Or maybe I decide that I want to be a little bit more musical and that would use some stepwise motion instead of hopping around everywhere. Stranger than a walking stick, stranger than a walking stick right? Something like that. So this is a good time, uh, even though our focus is on 16th note combinations, this is a really nice time to explore some of these musical decisions that students get to make when they improvise. Are they going to use stepwise motion to make it a little bit more of what we would expect from a melody? Or are they going to play just kind of randomly around the bars? At this point, they can choose. Same thing, are they going to end on the home note or are they going to end on something that makes it sound unfinished? Same thing here, they can choose. So we can give students some time to explore their combination. Again, both partners are playing the same rhythm, but they're improvising a different order of pitches. And then it's time to put it all together. There are so many different combinations that you could do to put this together and it will just depend on how you are using this activity, like what your goals are and what you need it to do for your curriculum, right? Uh, but when in doubt, the simplest thing to do is a rondo. What I would recommend, if you're just doing this for like, um, like a, a single class activity where you're going to share the final performance with a classroom teacher or maybe film it to put it on Seesaw, my recommendation would be to have your barred instrument set up in a circle or an arch and then uh, all students number off one two four one two three 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 four all the way around the room and then we're just taking turns in the rondo we're going to do rondo form where we speak the main rhyme two times in a row and then all the ones play at the same time so it is kind of like a solo but it's a much more uh, socially safe solo right because you are not the only one playing and all eyes are on you right? You, if you are one, you're playing with all the other ones in the circle. So all the ones play their combination the same way that they just practiced. And then they pass off their mallets to whoever their partner is. And you go around the room like that with all the ones playing at the same time, all of the twos playing at the same time, all the threes playing at the same time, and then all of the fours playing at the same time. And that's a nice way to cap it. One thing I want to point out here is the progression that we were using towards musical interdependence. So you'll notice at first with these 16th note combinations um, with the rhythmic building blocks, we were echoing first on body percussion that we choose. And then one student was going to the board and changing the order for everyone else to read. And then we were in partners with our own body percussion and then with that partner rhythm that we created we're playing it on one single bar and then after that we're playing it on any sort of improvised tone set that we want and then after that is the more individual solo section so that um, progression from whole class to smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller groupings and the progression of choosing body percussion with the same rhythm and then choosing the rhythm and the body percussion and then choosing the rhythm and the improvised melody. That is intentional. And so that's a nice progression if you are looking for a way to scaffold barred instrument improvisation. Another thing to point out here is that for this activity, we were in D Dorian, but there's no reason that we couldn't have been in another mode or in uh, something like C pentatonic, right? Because the purpose of this activity was a rhythm focus. It was 16th note combination. So takadimi, ta dimi, and takadi. 
And because it was a rhythmic focus, the specific tone set we use doesn't really matter. We're more concerned with the rhythmic articulation of these rhythmic building blocks. And then the last thing to point out here is that this is where we are ending the activity um, for the purposes of this objective, of the rhythm objective. But if we wanted to expand this, there are so many more possibilities that we might explore. So things like um, adding ostinati, we could add individual solos instead of like this group rondo solo that we were doing. Um, we could also add uh, like a level bordoon here. We could add a bunch of movements. We could add drama. We could be acting out the story as um, we are going in between different solos. Lots of options here. But that is where we're going to wrap it for It Fell From the Sky.